This is a video about Mountain Dew. About almost every flavor Mountain Dew ever made. The history, the ones I've tasted, and a weird little taste test thing I did with my friends. So here's a warning. This is pretty much just a white gamer boy who's about to get really sweaty and worked up about Mountain Dew. So, after everything I went through to make this video, I kinda now hate Mountain Dew and will probably never drink it ever again. Except for like in some specific scenarios, maybe like with new flavors because I'm super curious all the time. But, we kinda need to start somewhere before I get into all of the flavors. So here's the deal. It all started in the summer of 2022 when my wife and I went on a vacation road trip up to the Pacific Northwest. We were planning to spend some time in Poland and Seattle and a couple places in between. We stopped in Forks for exactly the reason you think I love my wife dearly. And while we were stopped at a gas station, on the outside I noticed an advertisement that said, Taste the Open Road, Purple Thunder Mountain Dew. Only available at Circle K. I couldn't believe my eyes. A Mountain Dew flavor that I had never tried. Well, I had to try it of course. So I rushed in and searched the mini shop for spare bottles of this mysterious nectar. I looked high and low and I discovered the Mountain Dew section in their soda fridge. And to my dismay, where the, the space there where they should be was completely empty. So I kind of started to walk out of the store dejectedly back towards the front. And I was pretty sure that I was just like not going to get to try it. And I was like, oh well that kind of sucks. But then I noticed that same advertisement above their soda fountain. So I was saved. This elusive flavor would be tasted by me upon this, the day of its discovery. I grabbed the most uh, unreasonably sized gulp of a cup that they offered and filled it to the brim. Before litting it, I kind of had to know, of course, it was fruity, as most Mountain Dews are. I drank from the chalice and, and, it was pretty good. I mean, you know, it's Mountain Dew. Really depends on your feelings on the soda in general. I mean, I'm a real gamer, so you know I loved it, but, like, I'm not trying to overhype it or anything. You don't need to try it. Anyway, this kind of sparked a curiosity in me. Like, what other flavors were out there that I had never tried? What was PepsiCo hiding from me? Well, I knew now that I needed to try them all. I had to go out and search for all these hidden flavors. It was my mission to find them, buy them, and try them. Little did I know that my research into these flavors was going to go down a really deep rabbit hole. See, Mountain Dew has a really long history with trying really weird flavors in really strange circumstances. So the first steps to knowing what I needed to find all of these flavors and to look up which ones I had never tried that were still around, was to look it up online, of course. And I found that there was, in fact, a wiki for Mountain Dew, as there are for all things. And while, yes, I was there to find the flavors that I needed to purchase, I also found that there were far more past flavors that I had never heard of that had been discontinued than I could have ever imagined. So I started making a list of all of the available flavors so I could keep track of which ones I had already bought, which ones I had already tried with the original intention of just collecting them like I have over here. But I kept finding these interesting flavors and events in the past that I wanted to learn more about. So while keeping the list of the ones I, I was going to buy and try, I also kept the list of all the ones that I thought were just kind of wacky and interesting. At first I wasn't going to make any video about Mountain Dew. I just cause doing this for my own sake because I thought it'd be fun. But then I thought again, since everything is content, maybe I could try all these flavors and rate them and then make a video and then just mention the weird flavor stuff that I had found the history of. But then I thought again, what if I forced my friends to do it instead? And not just that, I made them do it blind and try to guess which flavor was which. So anyway, in this video, I'm just going to talk about the flavors, how I got them, uh, what they were like, and I'm going to give them sort of a rating if I've tried them. And then I'm going to show you some of the footage of that taste test connected with it. There's no way this video can be that long, right? A small disclaimer, though. I'm not going to mention any of the Kickstart products or the Gamer Fuel products. 
I have my reason, but you can also kind of feel free to assume that this distinction is completely arbitrary. I don't think that they're as fun or exciting with their history, and there's way too many of them. It would take way too long, so not interested in those. The Mountain Dew formula was invented in Tennessee in 1940 by Barney and Allie Hartman. Back then, soft drinks were sold only regionally, which made finding one's preferred drink especially difficult. This is what happened with Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper was created uh, by someone trying to replicate a very specific soda fountain that they had when they were a kid. Actually, I think it's the specific smell of that soda fountain he tried to replicate in a drink. Very interesting. Anyway, the Hartmans in particular wanted to replicate their fo favorite soda drink that they used to mix with whiskey. So, they developed their own. In fact, the name Mountain Dew was a 19th century slang term for whiskey. The main ingredients that have persisted through the years are carbonated water, orange juice, and some sort of sweetener like sugar or corn syrup. The orange juice part surprised me because to this day it's still a part of the normal Mountain Dew formula, and that's why I think that the regular Mountain Dew is still pretty refreshing. The formula of Mountain Dew was revised multiple times over the years and passed through a couple of companies until eventually ending up in the hands of PepsiCo in 1964, where it would get distributed across the United States and Canada. All the way until 1988, there was only one Mountain Dew flavor. Or, I guess there was some test ones in 1986, but we'll talk about that later. But in the year of 1988, they introduced Diet Mountain Dew and Mountain Dew Red. Not to be confused with Code Red, which would debut in 2001. While Mountain Dew Red was the first new flavor in the States and Canada, it really wouldn't last long because it wasn't super popular. It wasn't until the spiritual successor Code Red that the proliferation of new flavors would kind of begin in earnest. So as you may be aware, nowadays Mountain Dew has this enormous lineup of flavors, including many that are region specific or seasonal. Nothing exemplifies this more than the democracy events that they used to hold, where fans could vote between three flavors to see which one would become a permanent flavor. In fact, one of my favorite flavors of all time was in Democracy 2, which was Distortion. What you may not have known is that before these events, 50 super fans were given seven new flavors that came in these little like silver cans with numbers on them like flavor 648. And those 50 people would get to decide which three would then get released all over the United States to be voted on by everyone else. That means that for each democracy event, there were four other flavors that we actually never got to try. However, based on the testimony of those 50 participants, many of those flavors actually did get repurposed later on for future flavors that were released. So now that we have that background and we know how we kind of got to this point with this insane number of flavors, let's, uh, let's get into them a little bit. I was not able to get all flavors into this taste test. Many were not available for us to try and obviously have been discontinued. Some were regions too far away and only in fountains so I couldn't get to them or buy them online. And of course some of them were seasonal only so if I didn't get them when they were in season I wouldn't be able to get them or if they were too old it wouldn't actually be healthy for us to try them. Like if I wanted to buy an uh, unopened can of distortion that probably would not be a good idea to actually drink since it's like what 10 years old or something like that now. So I just want to start with the flavors that we actually were able to acquire for our blind taste test. I will kind of open it with a clip of them trying it, and then I'll get into it a little bit. And I'm going to be real with you, these flavors are so much harder to guess when you can't see the color of the beverage. I had them all close their eyes while they were drinking them. I personally did it myself afterward, and was only able to guess 15 out of the 29 flavors that we had. Anyway, let us begin with the basics. I'm going to show a clip of us testing it, like I said before, and then I'm going to describe the flavor, a little bit of its history, and give you uh, my number out of 10 rating. I'm not going to do like decimal points, but I'll give you a rating on how I feel about the flavor and any extra trivia nonsense that I could attach to this flavor. Well, that's pretty tart. Mm -hmm. Is this regular Mountain Dew? Certified Mountain Dew, Sir Mountain Dew the third. Like, it doesn't taste like a specific flavor. It just, it just tastes... Yeah, that's like probably Mountain Dew. So this is the original citrus flavor, and as I outlined in the history section, it's differentiated from the other lemon lime sodas uh, by having actual orange juice in its recipe. I don't think I ever grasped or clocked the orange juice itself in OG Mountain Dew whenever I would drink it back in the day, but I did recognize it as being completely different or separate among other lemon lime sodas to the point that I never described it that way. 
It was just Mountain Dew flavor, not lemon lime. So that kind of meant that Mellow Yellow was also just a Mountain Dew-esque knockoff flavor. Anyway, I'd give the original Mountain Dew an 8 out of 10. I never mind a good old classic Mountain Dew. It's pretty good and refreshing and isn't as cloyingly sweet as some other flavors can be. Especially if it's been a minute since I've had regular Mountain Dew, it always hits different after it's been maybe a year or two since the last time I had it. So it always tastes pretty good in that context. That's Code Red. That's Code Red. Yeah, this is for That's Code Red. Code Red. That's Code Red. This tastes like a Minecraft LAN party. This is Code Red. <laughs> Alright. Released in 2001. Code Red was first introduced through an online racing game contest named Mission Code Red in March of that year. It was a browser racing game and those who got the highest scores were sent six pack of Mountain Dew Code Red while it was new, along with some random Mountain Dew swag. These would be the first people to test out the flavor, but it would be released in stores later that year either way. What you may not know about Code Red is that there was an original Red Mountain Dew that I mentioned earlier back in 1988. We're going to go over that later in this video, but it actually had a completely different flavor. Also, Coca-Cola made a competitor flavor to Code Red for Mellow Yellow in 2003, but seeing as nobody knows about Mellow Yellow Cherry, I'd say it wasn't very successful. Oh, also, how can it still be Mellow Yellow if it was red? That would just be Mellow Orange, right? <laughs> Code Red, though, is a cherry sort of flavor, and while I have no ill will towards the flavor itself, I've never really found myself craving it throughout childhood. It may be one of the most successful flavor variations of Mountain Dew in history, but for me it always remained the pretty decent flavor. I'd never say no to it, but there were always options I would choose above it, whether that be my favorites like Pitch Black or Whiteout, or the Label series or just a palate cleanser like the classic original Mountain Dew flavor. God, I sound so weird when I, uh, when I talk about Mountain Dew this way, but like, if you know me, I talk this way about kind of everything I like or I'm interested in. Oh, I know, the reason I'm talking about it with such depth is because I need you on the internet to know that I am a true gamer. These sorts of deliberations were absolutely happening daily for me back then, so if I do it and show you it now, you'll believe me. Anyway, solid 7 out of 10. I'm sorry Jesse Eisenberg's character from the 2009 hit movie Zombieland, it just doesn't hit as hard as many other flavors for me. It's not bad, the other channel, but I'd typically choose a different flavor above it. This is very orange. Ooh, that's good. Livewire? Oh my god. Uh, it's very orange. I think it's Livewire. So Livewire originally was a frequent limited time offer, meaning it would go in and out of sale. Kind of like Baja Blast does whenever it comes out in cans, then it goes away, then comes back. It used to come and go like super frequently, and it was first released this way in 2003, then 2004 again, then it went away, then came back in 2005, but at the end of 2005, they made it permanent. Even so, some regions of the United States still treat it kind of like a seasonal flavor, where they'll only carry it during the summer and no other time. Live Wire is a mostly orangey flavor, but not in the orange juice sort of way, more in the artificial orange soda kind of crush sort of way. It explicitly mentions orange in the tagline of the flavor, and this probably contributed to me not realizing that regular Mountain Dew had orange juice in it because, like, they got an orange flavor already! I probably drank this flavor the least as a young boy, which is funny because every time I drink it I remember, oh hey, it actually tastes pretty good. And the thing is, all of the staple Mountain Dew flavors are kind of like this. They are genuinely pretty good flavors if you're the kind of gamer who likes Mountain Dew. Real gamers, of course. So yeah, uh, it's like another 7 out of 10 for me, but a much more positive 7 out of 10 than Code Red, because when I come back to this one, I'm just always pleasantly surprised. Oh, I think I know this. Uh, right like on the smell. smell. Oh, it tastes like Tums. That's voltage. It. Yeah, that's voltage. That's voltage. <sighs> that used to, my, used to be my favorite. Major gamer cringe alert. This may not be my favorite flavor, but I'll be damned if it isn't the flavor that I probably drank more than any other flavor as a kid, preteen, and teenager. I've probably bought more of this than any other flavor in the entire roster combined. 
like uh, Mountain Dew came out with the Gamer Juice Code Red in 2001, and every edgy post 90s skater gamer kid was instantly signed up to only drink the red stuff for the rest of their teenage lives. But then the Mad Men at PepsiCo decided that the little guy, the everyman, should have a say in the means of producing Dew and the democratization of the Dew democracy, if you will. And as the masses gathered to take part in the socialization of soft drink distribution, PepsiCo dropped this banger among two much less compelling options. They knew what they had done. Supernova and Revolution, sadly, didn't stand a chance. Democracy was stolen from our hands by the irresistible draw of this insidious draft. Sorry boys, yet another revolution thwarted by blue raspberry flavoring. 8 out of 10, it's a pretty good flavor, I would still probably drink this. <laughs> this is Baja Blast. Is it? Wait. Oh my god, you're right. I think it's Baja Blast. <laughs> We're all Mountain Dew historians here, right? We all know the story of this one. Baja Blast started as a Taco Bell exclusive in 2004, but since 2014, it has regularly released in store shelves each size. Yeah. A ton of new Baja flavors have spawned from this one, some also being Taco Bell exclusives, while others immediately being released to gas stations and supermarkets. But all of those have been temporary. Baja Blast is eternal. They also made a Baja Blast hot sauce, which I did get to try, but I thought it wasn't that good, honestly, so I... The sheer fact that I literally get Baja Blast every time that I go to Taco Bell probably says a lot. Even though I don't really drink Mountain Dew that much anymore, it probably wouldn't be fair for me to give this flavor anything below a 7, so I'm gonna give it an 8. And this is as well because I genuinely love this flavor, especially when it comes from a fountain at Taco Bell. From a can or a bottle, it's less great. I would give it maybe a 7 from a bottle, you know, 6 from a can, honestly, and no, I'm not going to elaborate. I'm on my way! Major melon. Whoa, that smells melony. Going straight off smell, and I'm going to say major melon. Uh, this one? Oof, this one. Uh, okay, okay. So it came out in 2021, but it actually originates from uh, 2009 as one of the unreleased flavors numbered 648 in the Democracy 2 event, like the preliminary part called Do Labs, where members were chosen or fans were chosen based on video submissions to try out the seven prototype flavors, three of which would become finalists in the actual Democracy event for all of us plebs to vote on. The system was rigged by an elite group of supposed Do Labs members, huh? Why wasn't I invited? I'm truly a Do Lab fan. 4 out of 10, this flavor does not spark joy. Speaking of spark... Man, I'm not happy. <laughs> Sorry for the suffering I've caused you. This is either Overdrive or Spark. I don't know this which This tastes one. like Spark. This is Spark. Okay. Yeah, this is Spark. Okay. This one was originally a Speedway gas station exclusive in 2020 and 2021. It was finally released to the rest of us in 2022. So I guess now we can kind of include uh, specific gas stations among the ranks of the Dew Privileged. And I'll tell you what, this pink lemonade flavored Dew is not the only one to be locked behind the confines of region-specific gas stations or stores. Remember the story I started this video with for Purple Thunder? At least this one was eventually put on store shelves, unlike some of the others I'm gonna get into later. I do like this flavor, but something about the way the lemonade flavoring is introduced is really sticky it like sinks into my tongue and doesn't really go away i don't know like i guess it's something it's what do we call it cloying it's a cloying flavor i rarely would reach for one of these in a gas station but i don't hate it it's just the idea of finishing an entire bottle of this is never very appealing i would say six out of ten because it's a decent flavor but maybe you could put it lower just the base based on the fact that it's not a drink for me it's almost a dessert Okay. Smells weird. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got a whole lot of nothing. Honestly, <laughs> I honestly think this might be like a, one of the base Mountain Dews. So, way back in 2004, this grape flavored masterpiece was given to the world for a limited time as a Halloween flavor. But then it had a sequel, Pitch Black 2, in 2005, which I can't remember whether it even tasted all that different. But then it was released again, again in 2011 
in 2015, 2019, 1889, 1734, all limited time releases. And we almost didn't get this one in for taste testing, as it was actually not available whenever I started collecting the flavors for this video. But a combination of procrastination and luck allowed us to begin our filming very soon after this wonderful flavor was re-released in 2023. For the longest time, it was in my top tier and probably is top five still. So nine out of 10, it's one of the greats. I did not like that. No, me neither. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> Interesting. I'm gonna go with Skittles. Skittles, okay. Yeah. So when I first tried this flavor, I would have told you that it was one of the best flavors ever, forever, for sure, no takesies backsies. But after having had quite a bit of thrashed apple, more of it like since then, I would probably just categorize it as a good flavor. And it's never going to match the flavor that it kind of reminded me of, which we're gonna get into later. Anyway, this one was released to Kroger stores only in 2021, which of course I have no problem with whatsoever because I have a Kroger owned store right around the corner from me. Therefore, the regional discrepancy issue does not affect me in this case and I do not care. And of course, I don't care about things that don't affect me. Except for when Kroger almost discontinued this flavor, so me and some fellow heroes bought out all of their leftover stock, causing them to reverse this decision, and thus it became permanent. You're welcome. But I do want to be clear on something you may have been wondering. Was this the first apple flavor Mountain Dew ever made? No, because before this, the aforementioned favorite line of Dew products that I had had an apple-based flavor in as well, which I said I would get into later, give me a chance. And also there was some exclusive apple flavor for Via Italian Kitchen, just called uh, Apple, or it got renamed to Electric Apple later. And that has a whole story behind the Dub the Do contest, which I'll also talk about later. I'm pretty sure it's the same as Thrashed Apple in flavor, even though I've actually never tasted it. My evidence will become clear later on though. So was this the first one? Was the Electric Apple flavor or Via Italian Kitchen Apple, the first apple flavored Mountain Dew? <sighs> Look at you. So naive. Of course not. You remember that Democracy 2 event thing that I mentioned earlier? No? See, this is the problem. You never listen. Look, in that contest where the top 1% of Dew Society got to decide which three flavors the rest of us would vote on for the event, there was a flavor called Flavor 722, also known as Diet Crave. Now, I never got to try this in 2009, obviously because I was not a part of the Dew Labs. But also when it came back for Fandemonium in 2010, and I think 2011 as well, I somehow missed that one too, so that one's on me. More Dew flavor that I'm never going to get to know. Pain is what it is. Suffering. 8 out of 10 for Thrashed Apple, by the way. It's pretty darn good flavor. I do like it. Maybe it's just still smelling from the previous yeah, one. Yeah, wait. Oh no. You've been blessed by the Dew Drop. I'm going to go for the wig, I think. It's vaguely tart, but not tart enough. No, because he said he didn't like that one. And this one tastes fine. Hmm. He said he didn't like Fruit Quake. And this tastes fine. Since the Elden year of 2020, this frosty melon flavor has graced the shelves of our honored Walmart Super Centers. But here's what they don't want you to know. This is actually a re-release of 2017's Arctic Burst Game Fuel. You are not fooling me, PepsiCo. I see what is happening here. And the thing is, you see, our friends over at the Do Drinker Discord knew about this one flavor long before it released. So the jig is up. You can't keep doing this and getting away with it. Six out of 10, it just tastes like bad voltage. That's pineapple. That's pina colada. Yeah, that's Which one pineapple. is it though? There's two of them. <laughs> so it's Baja Gold and what? Maui Burst. Maui, Maui Burst. Mm. I'm gonna go Maui Burst, I think. I'm gonna put the Maui Burst, but I don't really know. Oh, did I not use Maui? Okay. Yeah. It's probably right then. You really thought we wouldn't notice? You think we wouldn't catch this? Baja Gold released in 2022 as a pineapple flavor? All right. Wait, what's this? Baja Flash? Ever heard of it? Released in 2021 as a pineapple flavor? Hold on, it can't be. Maui Burst? Released in 2019 as a pineapple flavor? 
And you may say, they may be all pineapple, but they probably taste different. And you would be wrong, in fact. We were all able to taste Baja Gold and Maui Burst for this taste test, and they tasted exactly the same. The conspiracy goes deep. Seven out of 10, pineapple flavor is a pretty good flavor, actually. I'm coming in. So I'm gonna yeah. go Baja, Baja Gold, yeah. but it's original. Yeah. That one's really good. I remember really liking Baja Gold Ooh, today. Good. Like Baja Gold is like better Baja Flash, I think. Or one of them's better. Mm. I think the Gold was the better one. All right, Maui Burst, let me take a breath. They are the same flavor. They are both available at the same time. Yet, Maui Burst is one that you can only get at Dollar General. How is it exclusive if I can get an identical flavor everywhere else in the United States at every gas station? This is unacceptable, seven out of 10. I mean, pineapple flavor is a good flavor, so like. I was gonna say, I don't know if it's the power of suggestion or the what. The power of suggestion. No, it's, like a it's a mango, dude. So we said gem was the mango punch? <laughs> so, so we're gonna go Baja gem? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> so Baja gem. Alright, that, that's the thing though, right? Why would they stop at doing it one time? We can clearly see them do it over and over. Baja gem, released in 2022, is no exception. Remember Baja punch from 2021, anyone? both tropical punch flavored and you are damn right that this isn't the first time they had a tropical punch flavored do ever heard of typhoon or flavor 509 from the do labs it always goes back to those scumbags six out of ten it's not the most memorable but it's it's fine overall Same, major melon. you think it's melon, major melon okay what do you got i was gonna say use either major melon or the uh Maui. It kind of tastes like a suggestion of a coconut. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I think like, it's Maui. Yeah. Okay. Coconut. Alrighty. And the thing about this is, 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 is Typhoon, like, like Typhoon, right? It goes all the way back to 2009. And then it became a, uh, a main contender in Democracy 2. It was so blatant, like, so obvious. They don't even try to hide it. And we lap it up every time. Maybe they thought that we wouldn't realize at first because it lost to Whiteout, right? So then Whiteout became a permanent flavor. But then they re-release it in 2022. And yes, I went to the Dew store to buy it online because I wanted to try it. I have a can of it right over here, okay? I have it right here. Ah! But just like Gold and Maui Burst, they're the exact same flavor! 7 out of 10, actually! I think Typhoon tastes a little bit better. I'm not exactly sure what's different. It's a little bit smoother, especially in the can. God, I wish I had some right now, actually. This, it's, it's Skittles, right? It's Skittles. That's gotta be Skittles. Mm. Honestly, it kind of tastes like Berry Monsoon. Berry Monsoon you're going yeah, for? Shit. Sure. Hey, I got a weird taste. Don't let, the, don't let yeah, anyone... Don't let us, like, yeah. 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 Like, Go with your instinct. Starburst is the other one. That's pretty close. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's like, is it Starburst or Skittles? I'm going Skittles. It but... smelled like Skittles. Right. It smelled like Skittles. <laughs> So Berry Monsoon, it 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 the Sam's Club flavor exclusive, right? Available since 2018, and I love this flavor. It's like a berry lime sort of deal that makes more of like a a more sour tasting limey sort of voltage, and I really like that. Like I'm I'm a huge fan of it. I just kind of wish it wasn't held away from us, exclusive to Sam's Club. Wait, hold on. What's this? No, not this flavor too. Wait, no, 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 no. It's fine though. Uh, look, you can you can have them as exclusives. I won't. Don't take this from me. It's the same flavor as Game Fuel Berry Lime from 2015, and Applebee's had a pink do that tasted exactly like this. Why was it pink? I can't handle this. It was called Berry Lime. I can't do it anymore. They can't take everything from me. They can't keep doing this, releasing the same flavor over and over. Nine out of ten. This one's a top tier banger. Oh, 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 okay. I think I know this one already. Okay, all right. <laughs> Ooh. And this is 11.45 sure. o'clock at night, and Nick asked me to get him some goji such as strawberry. This is what I'm tasting. I swear to God. What you got, Nate? Taste strawberry. Uh, Taste it's, just, it's, it's not quite what I think Spark is, but it's close. Voodoo? What? Where am I? Wait. 
Oh, 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 it's the, the candy corn flavored one for Halloween of 2019. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I, can get behind, I, can, I can get behind this. It's like Voodoo 2019 started as a trend that has continued every year since where they release a mystery flavor that's usually like candy or Halloween oriented and they kind of drop hints about it over the course of the month of October about, ooh, what could it be? And it's a very, it's a very uh, fun kind of limited time game that you can play online. The flavor itself for this one was very overly sweet. This cotton, or not cotton candy, it's candy corn one, is not something that I really wanted to drink more than once. Plus, real candy corn, not my favorite. So, this one I give a 3 out of 10, but the idea is really cool. Let's see what they do with it. Alright, I'm coming. That's terrible. It's a little weird. It tastes like an envelope. It tastes like if someone put flavored glue on like a manila envelope and I just, yeah. I can't get over it. Like it Bob was... coming in clutch with the no, sick analogy. No, that's what it tastes like. It's citrusy at the end. Oh, I'm not getting that. I'm not getting that. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's just all the Mountain Dew. So the 2020 flavor for Voodoo was labeled as a fruit candy explosion when they revealed what the flavor was and i'm not really sure what exactly that's supposed to taste like by that description but it tasted better than the 2019 one for me just too sweet like they're all way too sugary sweet when i read fruit candy explosion i'm thinking either like gushers or maybe they're just trying to rename something else but yeah four out of ten medium not great That smells good. Mm -hmm. that is very strong. Holy shit. Well, that's a lot. Wow. Okay. That's uh, a lot, though. I wouldn't be able to finish anything like that. Uh, right? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I know that. I know that flavor. Very sweet. I know that flavor. I know that flavor really well. Is it's it's really good. Starburst? Oh, yeah. I bet that's Starburst, dude. It is Starburst. I was like, I know that the, what this is trying to replicate really well. Like, it tastes like, like a, taste it a million times. Okay, so the 2021 Voodoo flavor. Now, for this flavor, this flavor was definitely Starburst. Like, clearly, you drank it and you knew that's what you were drinking. And I do like this one better than the last two. It just, the thing about all of these is that they make my f teeth feel like they're buzzing or being rotted out of my face as I drink it. So I give it a 5 out of 10 because the flavor is decent. But again, kind of like Spark, all of these flavors are ones I cannot see myself drinking an entire bottle or can of. Well, that one's gross. I thought I liked it at first, and it got, it got bad. Oh, this this has got to be Thrash Apple. Oh, my Wait, God. That's got to be Thrash Apple. So, Voodoo 2022. Ugh, well, I mean, they certainly tried here. They called it sour candy whenever uh, they revealed what the flavor was supposed to be. And when you try it, it feels like it's meant to be a Sour Patch Kids. And I got to say, it's they didn't really nail it. Like, it's, it, it's hard to tell that's what it is. It almost... Tastes like sour Smarties or gummy worms a little bit, like the sour kind, but I could never, I could take a few sips and I was done. This is not, not great. It's worse than the other ones, honestly. Three out of 10. Maybe they're going to do better this year, 2023. We'll see. This is being filmed in July of 2023, so who knows. Yeah, that's, that's pleasant. Mm. Ooh. I really like Let's it. Let's do Deep Dive. Yeah, that's all that one. Behind you. Very blueberry. It could, it could be the Frostbite one, but I, I like it either way. Um, Frostbite? What is Frostbite again? Uh, Winterberry. Ooh, Purple Thunder. Yes. The one that I mentioned in the intro of this. So Purple Thunder, a flavor released in 2022, uh, only available in Circle K gas stations. It's supposedly a plum berry, and I gotta say, it's really good. I would, if my introduction of it doesn't really explain it enough, then kind of let me tell you it this way. It was worth paying double the price per bottle to get them shipped way out here to Nebraska since we don't have Circle K around here. But, and, and I would mean like if I really felt like drinking Mountain Dew again, I would absolutely buy them that way again. This flavor slaps. It's, it's an easy, this, this flavor, it's an easy, it's, a, no, Game Fuel again? A game feel from 2013? Electrifying Berry? Please stop, PepsiCo. This flavor, it supposedly tastes like Electrifying Berry? It's called Blackberry Plum in Canada? I'm defeated. 9 out of 10. I'm gonna die.
They're like, <laughs> face oh, you made man. so good no, I don't like that at all I think it's birthday cake uh, oh gosh I said I may have had it before I don't okay so I've had birthday cake before that stuff was disgusting I don't think that's it you don't think it's that I don't want to tell you why I know what birthday cake tastes like though mm. this shit's terrible <laughs> horrendous stuff. Cake Smash uh, was originally a flavor given to contest winners in 2020 uh, for Mountain Dew's 80th birthday. The contest was to write the funniest celebration speech or party fail story from 2020. The winners got sent two cans of Cake Smash and the flavor was later brought upon the public without their consent from the Dew store in 2021. This flavor was disgusting, undrinkable filth. I had it for the first time when my brother first purchased some and then again when taste testing for this video. It is a 1 out of 10. The best use for this flavor is as a prank to your friends when they're blind taste testing Mountain Dew flavors. A very common and relatable occurrence. I'm coming! I'm really surprised I didn't actually like through all of these. I didn't just get birthday cake and throw up. Yeah. This is the last time I had birthday cake, it was awful. So to me, it tastes like a nondescript bad purple flavor. So I'm assuming purple? it's you think it tastes purple. Speaking of the privileges of winning a contest, let's absolutely 180 here. Baja Deep Dive. It was a flavor exclusively given out to the winners of the Lost Treasures of Baja Island sweepstakes in 2022. 18,000 contestants were sent six packs of these 16 ounce cans. Whereas I had to purchase mine from the Baja Deep Dark Web for $30 for a single can. Was it worth it? Did I spend my money wisely? Yeah, kinda. It was really enjoyable flavor. Like, if you took Baja Blast and like made it a slightly darker flavor profile. More blueberry mixed with Baja Blast. I really wish I could have tasted more of it, but I wasn't about to purchase another $30 can of Mountain Dew, so I'm sorry. Technically, I have not had a full serving of this flavor, but even so, I'd give it a 9 out of 10. Like, Baja Blast, but better? I really wish they would re-release it. Even if it was just like what they did with Typhoon, where I could buy it from the Dew store exclusively. Gosh. Mm, that that has no, I don't like that smell. Oh, like what the smell. hell? <laughs> that does not taste good. Oh my god. What the Oh my god, is what is that? <laughs> This actually know, yes. might be the vibe. Because there is one wish which is all of Omaha, and it's the only one that has, this is the only place that has Mountain Dew vibe in all of Nebraska. Vibe is another flavor exclusive to a specific restaurant chain, and in this case, the lemonade flavor Mountain Dew is available only at Witch Witch. But see, you probably saw this coming, because of course, this one was originally, say it with me now, a game fuel from back in the days of seasonal beautiful Call of Duty themed flavor releases. But back then, these were for everyone. They may have been limited time offers, but at least we all could get them at the store. Now, I have to drive to a restaurant that I never eat at just to get it. And to make things worse, the time we got it for this video, the place was actually out of the syrup and we didn't realize that till we got it here. So when we drank the fountain drink, it was literally just carbonated water. I have had the flavor plenty before, and as a true Mountain Dew fan, I would give it a 7 out of 10. Lemonade soda is actually super underrated. I'm popping in. Hmm. I don't know. Alright, that last one was pitch black. This one's Baja Dita. We're so fucked on this light. Yeah, I'm just pushing purple number. This is this is just like so uproar. See, I had such high hopes when I heard about this region-specific flavor. Yes, PepsiCo was keeping these different flavors from me in different regions to make me work for it, to make me spend the money. But when I heard that Uproar was supposedly a strawberry kiwi flavor available only at Food Lion grocery stores, I thought, that sounds awesome. And yes, I did order online a six-pack of bottles of this stuff, was it good? I mean, yeah, it was like decent, right? But when I heard strawberry kiwi, I thought, now that's a great flavor idea for Mountain Dew. When I tried it, it was just all right. Like none of the flavors stood out. The strawberry wasn't strong. The kiwi wasn't strong. It was just sweet and kind of tasted like that. I'd still give it maybe a six out of 10 and I would drink it again, maybe, but 
All in all, it just ends up tasting like the syrup and smelling vaguely of strong. I guess that kind of says a lot of my willingness to drink any Mountain Dew at all. But the more and more I talk about Mountain Dew in this fashion, the farther from my own words that I feel. I feel like I'm dissociating. I'm coming in. Mm -hmm. It's overdrive. Okay. It's just, just, just like, yeah, all right. <laughs> Me too, I'll write that down. <laughs> Whatever makes it go away. <laughs> overdrive. Okay. Whew. Okay, uh, overdrive. That's the Casey's one. Yes, okay. So it was originally presented in a taste test environment where two identical versions of this flavor were given to participants and they would figure out which one was going to be what and what it was going to be called in October of 2021. Overdrive was actually later released in June 2022 as an exclusive flavor to the gas station virus consuming all other Midwestern gas stations Casey's. Trust me, if you live out here, you know what I'm talking about. Thankfully, this one does come in bottles and it's... I guess you could describe it as a citrus punch sort of dew flavor. Dew fans or dew true believers call it a raspberry lime mango flavor, and I'm not really sure where they get that from at all. I'd probably go much closer to the punch category. The separate fruit flavors are not discernible. It's kind of just a fruit cocktail blended until it gives a vague sweet syrup sort of flavor. It's it's okay, but again, six out of ten, solid, not the best. And I'm coming in. Very liquid. That one smells good too. Oh, I really don't like that. Yeah. I, this tastes like a I motel. Love this I can't too. explain it. I, mm. Ooh, it's, right. motel, it's motel flavors. That's it's the weird. Yeah, yeah, see, I'm not lying. I'm writing that down. I don't think I'm that's on the list, guys. That's weird. I'm sorry. Wait, it tastes like not spicy perfume. <laughs> it really does taste yeah. good. Yeah. So, goji citrus strawberry. It's not in cans or bottles, it's only in gas station fountains, but unlike all of the other undemocratic flavors that are cloistered away in specific gas stations where you can only get them at their specific fountains or Sam's Club hiding away this lime berry flavor that I want right now, Goji Citra Strawberry is actually at a lot of gas stations, not specific ones. It started out in 2017 at just like Jackson's and Sheets gas stations. But over the years, unlike a lot of these other ones, it spread to a myriad of other gas station chains from Sinclair and Speedway to the legendary Come and Go. This flavor is not going to stop until every gas station is taken. I could swear that I even saw a Casey's carrying it right next to their special overdrive flavor. Suspicious and delicious. This one's very refreshing, 7 out of 10. Foot lettuce. All right, let's go. I'm coming. <coughs> oh no, Bob, no! So I think this might be the flaming hot. That's one. so weird because the beginning of it's just like boring, yeah. nothing, sweetness. Yeah, like, and it made my. And then it's like at the end, you're like, ugh, ugh. Fuck no, 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 no. What? Okay. What you see? Well, what do you? What do you? Well, okay. So there, there actually is some interesting trivia here, but we need to get the flavor out of the way first. Flamin' Hot Mountain Dew tastes horrible. It's like a little bit of lime flavor, maybe a little bit of cinnamon, and then like a whole lot of ass. A 2 out of 10. Now, of course, you may be asking, why didn't I give it a 0 out of 10 if I think it's so horrible? Well, the lime part is actually kind of pleasant, but it's super faint. So if they had like expanded that flavor, it might have been a little bit better. And there's another reason I didn't give this one a 0 out of 10. I want you to remember that I gave this a 2 out of 10, and not a zero out of ten. I'm saving it. Right, the trivia, the trivia. Where did I put it? Where did I put it? Oh yeah. Uh, so the trivia for this one is the first run of this product was actually only released for less than an hour in 2021. It was almost as if PepsiCo knew it was a joke or poison, but then it was released again in 2022 for a limited time after a fun event that they called the official drink of hell where they uh, had a mini festival in Hell, Michigan, yes, a real place, with a mini golf and a DJ. And I'll admit that that's actually pretty cute. I really love that idea. But the drink was awful. People didn't buy it except for the novelty of trying this awful drink, which is obviously why they stopped production of this almost a year ago. Though sometimes I still find them in stores, so I'm assuming that that's just like back stock. All right, come in. 
Oh no, that's gotta be, that smells spicy. Yeah, yeah it smells it's spicy. Spicy. It, Wasn't there a weird gingerbread one? There is, but he doesn't have it. That's right. Mm. Wait, why don't you have it? I have it. I'm so sorry, please put it on the list. It is, is it, one of them. It is okay. one of them. It was spicy in the way that mm -hmm. like, gingerbread is, you know? Yeah. It's spiced. Spiced, yeah. 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 Oh shit, oh, I'm sorry. We are no longer in the good ones, guys, so bear with me. Gingerbread Snapped is supposed to taste like gingerbread soda? Like, not like ginger ale, but like gingerbread soda. Like, if they had made this a ginger ale mixed with Mountain Dew, which is something they actually did do in Japan, then maybe we would have found a good flavor. But life can never be that good for us. Not when PepsiCo's in charge. See, we were all built for suffering, which is something that they know. See, if we don't suffer, if PepsiCo doesn't cause us to live our life in anguish, then where are we going to get good art? The CEO of PepsiCo wants good art. So anyway, another friendly neighborhood, one out of ten, right there with Cake Smash. But not quite zero out of ten. I'm a cool mini. Oh god, that's awful. Yeah. That might be Fruit Quake. Oh, that's gotta be Fruit Quake. That's awful. Fruit Quake. Right, yes, Fruit Quake. Damn, I really did it to you guys, like, a bunch of horrible ones in a row. Might have been on purpose. So yes, I gave Flamin' Hot a 2 out of 10, remember? So Fruit Quake is supposed to taste like fruitcake, and I have never tasted a fruitcake before, so I don't really have any frame of reference for this, but if they taste anything like this drink does, then I'm glad I've never had a fruitcake. This is quite possibly one of the worst flavors ever conceived of. Like, I might hate Cake Smash, but if you made me choose between this one and Cake Smash, I would drink Cake Smash again. This is an easy 0 out of 10. This is the 0 out of 10. It is so bad. I do not recommend you ever trying it, even for novelty. Get it out of my house forever. Okay, I believe that that's all the flavors that we had available for our taste test. So these next flavors will include flavors that we had no access to for that taste test. But you can assume I either was unable to procure them in time or that they have been discontinued for the purposes of this video. And I'm only going to include ratings for ones that I've actually tasted. Otherwise, they're just going to include some history and a description of maybe what the flavor was like for those who had had it before. And maybe some trivia too, if I can find some. So let's start with Mountain Dew Real Sugar. Mountain Dew Real Sugar, it's pretty basic and very similar to the original flavor. Only a little bit sweeter, but like less cloyingly so. It was originally released as Mountain Dew Throwback in 2009 for a limited time, and then it returned in 2010 where it remained all the way in 2020. It was then rebranded as Mountain Dew Real Sugar, though it currently doesn't seem to be available everywhere because I couldn't find any for the purposes of this video. The main difference with this one is instead of using um, uh, corn syrup, it uses cane sugar. I'd give it like an 8 out of 10. It's pretty good and pretty right there with the original Mountain Dew. Not different enough for me to give it a different grade. Sweet Lightning is yet another exclusive being kept from you. It is exclusive to KFC, and it's been available since 2019. We serve this here Sweet Lightning at KFC, and only at KFC. It tastes kind of like an orangey, peachy sort of thing. It's very sweet, but kind of pleasant nonetheless. And I wouldn't choose to drink it again if I could help it, but it isn't something that I think tastes bad. It's just more that this flavor isn't for me, and they're keeping it from you. They're trying to hide it. I found it as a 5 out of 10 drink. Whiteout is up there as one of the greats. Uh, it was originally released in 2010. They call it a smooth citrus flavor, but I think that kind of hides the true star of the flavor because I see it as a grapefruit style profile. It's also been described as yuzu and lemongrass, but it's all artificial anyway, so I still stand by my assessment of grapefruit. The first place we saw this flavor was in one of the Democracy events, the Democracy 2, where it faced up against Typhoon and Distortion. Ultimately, it came out on top as a permanent flavor. However, in 2019, its production got reduced dramatically due to low sales, so currently it's only available in 20-ounce bottles at gas stations. Like I said, though, this is among the better flavors and easily makes the 8 out of 10 for me, and only because I am not doing half steps, because it is better than 8, but it's kind of closer to an 8 than a 9. Merry Mashup, not to be confused with Holiday Brew, it's a special flavor released in the holiday seasons of 2018, 2019, and 2020 and it tastes like cranberry pomegranate. It's easily one of my top five flavors of all time. It is fantastic. 
It's not been brought back since, instead being replaced by different Christmas flavor each of the following years. I give this one a 9 out of 10. I really wish they would bring it back. I love pomegranate flavors, like, in general, and I'm kind of having trouble not taking it personally that they would discontinue all of my favorite flavors. Holiday Brew was simply just a mix of 60% Code Red and 40% Regular Dew. It was released in 2017 and was fairly mediocre. It's like not bad since Code Red and Original Mountain Dew are both pretty decent flavors, it's just not very exciting. And I personally would rather have each of those flavors separate. Both Regular and Code Red are better separate than they are together, so 6 out of 10 is the best I can do for this one. Dark Berry Bash. Uh, yeah, very good, very good. It's like a blue raspberry mixed with a blackberry flavor. It's been available at Applebee's exclusively since 2021, and I love it. Ever since we did this taste test, I've pretty much stopped drinking Mountain Dew. Actually, for the most part, I've stopped drinking soda with sugar in it in general because tummy troubles. But if you find me an Applebee's, you can bet I'm already drinking one of these. 10 out of 10, great flavor. PepsiCo, please put stuff like this in a bobble. Bobble? In a bobble, like Urza's bobble. You know, fuck it, we're moving on to the next flavor. Liberty Brew was supposedly a mixture of 50 different flavors, but I really couldn't tell what flavors that was supposed to be. It just kind of tasted vaguely of mixed berries. It was enjoyable for the most part, but too vague to be memorable above more focused berry flavors like Dark Berry Bash and Voltage. It was released for the 4th of July in 2019 and 2020. 7 out of 10 flavor. Decent. Not to be confused with Liberty Brew, Du S.A., released for the 4th of July in 2017. And much like the Holiday Brew, it's just a concoction of other Mountain Dew flavors. Man, this is confusing. Why don't they keep the same naming convention for them? Shouldn't they both be the, like, shouldn't the mixes of flavors be the brews? Liberty Brew and Holiday Brew should be the ones that are the combinations of already existing flavor. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Anyway, this one's White Out, Voltage and Code Red, Red, White, and Blue. Again, each of these flavors are better on their own, and this time it's kind of even worse, as the more flavors you mix in, the more muddled the flavor becomes. 5 out of 10, not that good. <sighs> this one gonna make me act up. Okay, so... Buffalo Wild Wings exclusive since 2022, all right? Legend is Blackberry Citrus. I go crazy for blackberry flavors. Yes, 10 out of 10 right out the gate. I'm letting you know, Legend is one of the better flavors that exists. The color of the drink's actually kind of weird looking. It looks kind of like gray sludge or blackish drink. But I gotta say, don't let that fool you. It tastes amazing. This is definitely one of my favorites. Much like the Applebee's one, I don't really care if it's gonna rumble my honestly way too sensitive tummy. If I'm in a Buffalo Wild Wings, I am drinking this. I repeat, 10 out of 10. Aurora was a Japanese exclusive strawberry flavor that Mountain Dew released in 1986. Had a very short run, ending in that same year. What's interesting about Aurora and the flavors that it was released with is this is before any different flavors were ever released in North America. So technically, Aurora and its, you know, partner flavors were the first alternate flavors of Mountain Dew. Obviously, I've never tried it, so I'm not really going to be rating it. You can find a couple of commercials of this flavor online that I'll be playing on screen as well, but the flavor apparently was not widely distributed, even in Japan, meaning very few have actually ever tasted it. Mountain Dew Red. I mentioned this earlier, actually. It's a similar strawberry flavor, like Aurora, that was only released in 1988 in Alabama in the United States and then discontinued. Judging by the release dates, one can assume that the Japanese Aurora likely inspired this creation, though in both situations, the product ended up failing. Solar Flare is a tropical punch flavor that was, and in very select cases still is, only available at 7-Eleven gas stations in their fountains. I do not live near 7-Eleven, the Midwest kind of being what it is, but even in all the 7-Elevens I have been in, I actually haven't found it there. It's extremely elusive and mostly extinct as a species of Mountain Dew. It was originally released in 2014, but began its very slow decline following that year. It supposedly still can be found, so if you know of a 7-Eleven that is holding out on me, please send me their address. Recompense is required. Southern Shock is a similar flavor to Solar Flare, according to those who've had it. And I've never had this one either, so while I would try to excuse that by saying, I've got no Bojangles near me to go to to try it, Apparently it was actually discontinued this year in January, so even if I had one near me, I wouldn't have been able to try it either way. I'm sure this 40th Tropical Punch flavor would have totally blown my socks off and been way different than Typhoon, but I guess we'll never know, PepsiCo. Cyclone, what's this? A citrus punch flavored Mountain Dew flavor? 
how unique, how interesting, how only available at Speedway gas stations from 2019 to 2022. How very, I've never tried this flavor, but also don't really have anything interesting to say about it. So I'm just going to assume it tastes like all the other ones. Supposedly, it tasted and looked just like Sangria. Wait, hold on, what? Supposedly, it tasted and looked like Sangria Blast? Wait, I love that one. Okay, of course, that draws me right back in, because I do love Sangria Blast. So in the States, Blue Shock is the name of the blue Slurpee flavor at gas stations. But in Malaysia and Singapore and Pakistan and the Philippines, I believe, this is the name that they had for Voltage. It's been discontinued in all of those except Malaysia, so you can find bottles of it that kind of look like Voltage bottles, but the, the way that their packing plants do bottles, but it says Blue Shock on it. I've had the Slurpee and it's pretty yummy, and since I kind of like Voltage, I'm gonna give it a 7 out of 10, I think. Now your first assumption for Atomic Blue might be that this is yet another Voltage clone. And while, well, kinda, but also apparently not. It is available at Sheets gas stations as a fountain drink, but was also available at the legendary Come and Go from 2020 to 2021, which I apparently missed out on. So I could have had it all, but was not cognizant enough as this was apparently a blue lemonade flavor, which would have absolutely been my jam. Oh well, I'll give it an honorary nine out of 10, even though I've never tried it. Mountain Dew Sport was an alternate flavor of regular Mountain Dew available from 1989 to 91. It was supposedly meant for an active lifestyle with ingredients made for sports and low calories. Probably even had an electrolyte or two in that bad boy. Have I tried it? Well, it was discontinued before I was born, so what do you think? Yeah, Golden Lime. So, this is kind of fucked up. This flavor sounds rad to me. Golden Lime, a lime-flavored Mountain Dew, available only in Japan from 1986 to 1987? Much like Aurora, it did not last very long. But it was among the first alternate flavors of Mountain Dew ever made, and supposedly it tasted very similar to one of my favorite flavors of all time. Distortion, a lime-flavored Mountain Dew, was released along with Supernova and Whiteout for the Democracy 2 event as options that you could vote for to be permanent flavors. And this one's my favorite. Well, maybe not my favorite flavor of all time, but pretty close. And like, to you, to you, it may sound simple, right? It may just like lime, a little bit of extra lime in your Mountain Dew. What's the big deal? But to me, it's like, it's much, much more. Like, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you even, like, Distortion was special, right? You can't take this from me. It's a 10 out of 10, and no, I'm not going to be taking questions. Dry Ginger is another Japan exclusive that was available in 1990. It supposedly tasted like ginger ale and original Mountain Dew kind of mixed together, but much like Aurora and Golden Lime, it was released to a small enough market and discontinued so fast that many actually have never tried it. Yes, that does include me. No, I'm not bitter, even though it sounds pretty good. Yet another Japan exclusive, Violet, however, was a little bit more recent. It was available from 2019 to 2020, and it was a, a, it was a, it was a grape elderberry flavor. And and, and again, and and, and again, fuck, god damn it! What the fuck? Why does PepsiCo keep withholding from me all that I desire, all of the best flavors? Grape and elderberry? Are you joking? Give it to me now, PepsiCo! Are we gonna fight? Am I gonna go to war with PepsiCo? I haven't even tried it yet, and it's a 10 out of 10, of course. Oh, yeah, grape. Yeah, by the way, just thought I'd add this in here. This was a simple grape Mountain Dew that also released in Japan from 2010 to 2011. PepsiCo, I'm watching. PepsiCo, I know where your factory is around where I live, okay? This would be a good place to add this, huh? Oh, yeah, sorry. <clears throat> Let me compose myself. So, extreme. So while I'm at it, yes, I might as well add that there was a Middle Eastern version of Pitch Black in with the other grape flavors. And though, unlike the previous two, it wasn't its own flavor. It was kind of just like a re-release of Pitch Black in Middle Eastern regions, and they just called it Extreme. I'm pretty sure it tasted mostly the same, just with a different name. Uh, speaking of Pitch Black variants, uh, Darth Dew was the Slurpee version of Pitch Black that they released in 2005 to promote Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith better known as the movie that sounded better on paper. Also, I never tried this. Supernova was available in the United States in 2008 for the first Democracy event, matched up against uh, Voltage and Revolution. And after its embarrassing defeat to Voltage, Supernova bounced around a lot. It was available in the Philippines for in 2009, and also briefly brought back to the States in 2011. In 2013, 2014, and strangely enough, 2023, Canada also got a re-release of this flavor. 
It was supposed to be like a strawberry melon flavor, and for the most part it was pretty decent. I remember liking it. I wouldn't mind if they brought this one back, but I also really wouldn't mind if they abandoned it forever. 6 out of 10, Revolution. Along with Supernova and Voltage, Revolution was released back in 2008 for that first Democracy event. It also was re-released for a special throwback event online where contestants could win glass bottles of this that just had like a white label on them. I actually do not remember trying this one at all. I could lie to you all and pretend like I remember what this tasted like and just use the berry flavor description that they have online. So let's do that. Yeah, let's do that, shall we? Um, it was a wild berry flavor and I sure like my berry flavors, so 7 out of 10? Berry Twister. So this is a recently discontinued Circle K Canada exclusive. Why does Circle K get all the best flavors? So it was flavored as strawberry melon? Hold, hold on. Wait. Not again. PepsiCo, PepsiCo, PepsiCo. Okay, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to shoot you straight. I'm not going to be a problem right now. Okay. So wait a minute. So Supernova is... So wait, hold on. No, it's Berry Twister. Berry Twister? Berry Twister. Berry Twister is strawberry melon. Supernova? Is that you? Wait, okay, so this one was available from 2020 to 2022. That's sus. I've never tried this one. You're still a 6 out of 10, Supernova. You don't get a second chance. Sangria Blast. This one was uh, originally a Taco Bell exclusive from 2013 to 2017. I had a pretty long run for an exclusive. And it was a citrus punch with what, in my opinion, felt like pomegranate-style flavor. It also was briefly released in cans and bottles in 2015, but just like Baja Blast, that version tasted way worse. The fountain version absolutely gets a solid 8 out of 10 from me. But for some reason, the can version, like, the balance of flavors was so bad, like, it stuck to your tongue and was not very good. 5 out of 10 for sure on the can version. Not <laughs> Darkberry, not to be confused with Darkberry Bash. This was a flavor released in 2012 along with the release of the Dark Knight Rises movie. It was a mixed berry flavor like so many of these are. And no, I didn't even try it, so I got nothing. Interestingly, it stayed available in Romania from 2012 to 2016, completely independent of the movie. But everywhere else it stopped in 2012. I would guess this is probably similar to the Applebee's flavor, because as we all know, PepsiCo just keeps recycling these things. Ah, yes, the ice flavors. So this was a flavor that was Mountain Dew trying to make Sprite, or, or like 7-Up, like actual lemon-lime, no orange juice, none of the, their other stuff. But it was less like Mountain Dew and kind of more like Sprite, so it wasn't a unique thing. Like, it was touted as having a splash of real juice to set it apart, but it really just tasted like another of those kinds of drinks, but not even as good, so it really wasn't anything special. It was available from 2018 to 2020, and it was discontinued due to poor sales. There was even like a revival for it planned, but it was canceled because the hype just really wasn't there. I'd give it a 5 out of 10. It's not like an actively bad flavor. I can finish a bottle of this, but it's not special, and I'd rather have Sprite usually. Ice Cherry is the exact same thing as the regular ice flavor, except it was cherry flavored. It was also discontinued in 2020, and it really wasn't that good. 5 out of 10 doesn't have a reason to exist. MDX was an energy drink formula to the regular Mountain Dew available from 2005 to 2007. It's kind of similar to Mountain Dew Amp, if you know what that is. I never really tried it, but apparently it was meant to compete with Coca-Cola's Vault. You know, Vault? That very popular and famous energy soda that totally is still around? To be fair about that, though, Vault did last from 2005 to 2011, so... MDX was actually only around for two of those years. So technically, Vault won the battle against MDX, but lost the war to Mountain Dew as a whole. Oh, extreme pomegranate. This is a really brutal and like fucked up one for me. Pomegranate, like I said, is one of my favorite flavors. And here was literal pomegranate, literal pomegranate Mountain Dew, but it was only available at the elitist Via Italian Kitchen restaurants from 2014 to 2015. I never even had a chance. And that's what's so fucked up about it. Like, it's not, it's not, it's not just not fair, right? It, what's even more fucked up is that Via already had Electric Apple. They already had their own exclusive flavor. 
Can they just give me extreme pomegranate? Let me have this one? Just make an exclusive flavor for the It's Not Good YouTube channel, okay? Let me have this, PepsiCo. So Johnson City Gold was a malt-flavored version of the original Mountain Dew. It was non-alcoholic, but it was based on the original creator's brew that they used to make for special occasions and meant to be mixed with alcohol, especially whiskey. It was available from 2012 to 2013 in very specific regions. In my brief research, I actually wasn't able to find what region it means when it says specific regions. So, no, of course, I haven't tried this one. But if I had, I wouldn't tell you. Dushine, uh, despite alluding heavily to the idea of being an alcoholic drink, Dushine is also non-alcoholic, boasting a much higher content of real sugar as opposed to corn syrup. So it's kind of adjacent to the throwback Mountain Dew. It also did not contain the standard orange juice that other Mountain Dews commonly do. It was available from 2015 to 2017. But this one I will tell you I, I never tried. Like, I saw it many times in the store and had the opportunity to try it, but I wasn't really interested in trying it. And I'm just going to assume that I knew without knowing that it didn't have the orange juice part, which is like one of the parts of Mountain Dew that makes it interesting. Okay, I know I said that like, I'm not drinking Mountain Dew much anymore. But after reading through all, all, all this ton of this script, it legitimately makes me want a regular Mountain Dew. I don't want any of the special stuff. I just want a basic ass Mountain Dew right now. Maybe even mix it with orange juice to have more of the orange juice flavor. That sounds sick as fuck. What am I doing to myself? Does marketing work? Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly what you think it is. So these flavors, Doritos, Ginger Lemonade, and Mango Habanero were released as taste testers at various college campuses. PepsiCo had like these stands with all these like plastic cups that they would pour it into. There was no like real branding for it, um, allowing people to test these three flavors. So like Ginger Lemonade sounds like a refreshing summer drink. Ginger and Lemonade flavored Mountain Dew. I would like that. That sounds good. Mango Habanero. That's pretty unique and may have been good or may have been asked like Flaming Hot. It's really kind of up in the air for that one. I mean, it was probably good because apparently there was like a game fuel that came out later that was based on it. So, Doritos. If it isn't obvious, Doritos, right? Doritos, Mountain Dew, Doritos. Okay, horrible. This was clearly a joke, right? It's a prank. They couldn't possibly be making a nacho cheese blasted Mountain Dew flavor. But according to people, they didn't even like attempt to move this on to another step because people hated it so much. Woo, be proud of me. We made it here to the best Mountain Dew flavors of all time. White, green, and black label. If you never tried these, I feel sorry for you. Well, okay, let me rephrase that. If you like Mountain Dew and never tried these, I feel bad for you. This is the holy grail. This is the god tier. 11 out of 10. These were legendary among boys, girls, and non-binary people of the gamer persuasion. It was available from 2017 to 2019, and these flavors only came in 16-ounce cans, meant to evoke the mystique of a refined palate. And to be honest, I, I really like these flavors. Like, to an excessive level. I ordered boxes and boxes of these from all their online stores. I had them shipped. They came in these big boxes with these like cutout sections with all of them in it in like multi-packs with all the three different flavors. These are the greatest three Mountain Dew flavors and we will never get them back. PepsiCo, like I said, PepsiCo did this to spite me. They let me try it. They were like, oh here, we know you'll like this. We're so benevolent. And then two years later, they just snatch it away. It's gone forever. And they taught me with it. They hold it over my head for four years. They have held these flavors above me to keep me going. You may think that this is a video about Mountain Dew and just some silliness and me looking into it and tasting the flavors with my friends. But this is actually my tribute. This is my payment. This video is me trying to get these back. PepsiCo, if you are listening, Please release these flavors again, okay? The green one was apple kiwi. The perfect accumulation of green flavors to balance one another out in harmony. White was a pineapple grapefruit, tart and beachy flavor that kicked your taste buds up to the roof of your mouth to remind you what flavors could be. And, and, and of course, black label. We can't forget the dark 
Berry Body Man. Now that name, that may, name may sound like Dark Berry Blast, Dark Berry, Dark Knight, Edgy Edge Lord, Drink of the Future. But those dark berries were more like Blackberry, Elderberry. And let me tell you, this was the most complex Mountain Dew flavor has ever been. You think, but Johnny, the beat ups flavor is blackberry, right? The apple bees, that one's like a mixed berry. That's got to be pretty close, right? How can you hold this one above those? That's a fair question. But let me ask you, have you ever eaten a fresh blackberry? Do you think the Buffalo Wild Wings flavor actually tastes like a fresh blackberry? No, of course it doesn't. It's tasty, but not an actual blackberry. You see, this is where Black Label shines. It tastes like a blackberry smoothie soda. It tastes like carbonated forest blackberries picked fresh for your can immediately before opening. If you haven't tasted it, you cannot speak on this. You don't know what you're talking about. And if you have tasted this and disagree, then I don't trust you. Again, all of these flavors 11 out of 10. Hands down, best Mountain Dew ever has been and ever will be. If you want to be good, if you want to be great, Pepsi, re-release those flavors. Cowards. Tried any of these flavors except for the one that got released this summer. But honestly, I would die to try them. Including Pickle. I don't care. Like, PepsiCo, the thing is, right, by doing this, I can tell what they're doing. PepsiCo wants me to beg. And they want me to beg them. So yeah, all right, fine. For these flavors, for the label series, please, PepsiCo, give me a chance. The ones that I want the most are Huckleberry and Elderberry. I am particularly fond of Elderberry-flavored drinks in general. But I guess it's just another thing that wasn't meant to be. Unless you want to change that, PepsiCo. There's always a chance for you to make amends. Bring back the label series, release Huckleberry, release Elderberry, and Pickle just for fun. Oh shit, there's actually one more thing I need to talk about. Okay, the last thing I need to talk about was the Dub the Do event, which was connected with the Via Italian Kitchen thing with the Electric Apple flavor. So, this whole event was an unmitigated disaster. Like, this was the event that allowed fans to help name the new Green Apple flavor that was going to be at that place in 2012. The promotion kind of opened to fans online to submit new names and then vote for the ones that they thought were good for that restaurant exclusive flavor. Not long after this promotion got into place, online communities, mostly 4chan, began doing their thing. Which is how we ended up with this. It was likely that the site kind of got hijacked to allow multiple votes, votes per user, which is how 4chaners were able to push their garbage to the top. But also the internet kind of being what it is, this really shouldn't have been a surprise for the Mountain Dew team. After that, the website was taken down and was not relaunched. Instead, the flavor just kind of was named Electric Apple, and they pretty much tried to forget the whole event. So, okay. This is the end of the video. I'm just... Uh, I went through a lot for that. It spent way too long. I finished this video script last night, um, but I've been sitting on it for maybe almost a year. It is 20, the summer of 2023 right now, and I first came up with the idea for this video... A literal year ago when I was on that trip with my wife so this been cooking for a long time um, but it wasn't until like I had some extra time recently that I was actually able to hammer this out but that's all that's the video it's over I'm done I'm not making any more shit for this Mountain Dew video thing um, thank you for watching if you made it this far I love you you're beautiful um, um, I would love it if you guys liked the video, or if you didn't like it, you can thumbs it down. That's fine, too. Comment whatever you feel like commenting based on this, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Um, we do streaming usually every Thursday at 7 p.m. Central, but, you know, it's not super consistent. We have a second channel where we post edited versions of our streams, kind of chopped up. Um, there were a couple of flavors that I missed for this video because they came out after we did all this taste testing stuff i'll probably release some like tiktoks or something of me trying them out with my friends seeing what we think of those flavors in conjunction with this sorry i'm burping and stuff 
my whole sinuses are a mess today, but I was like, I gotta film it. That's it. Bye. <laughs> That's good enough for me. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Y'all are cool. I love all of you. Later.